Hey guys, what is up? My name is LBC2 from Specs Arena and today I'll be doing a tutorial for road destruction. And this tutorial was requested by Mr. Glow. So what we'll be doing over here is we'll be destroying a road. So how do we go about doing that? The first thing we'll do in our scene is we are going to create a block. So we always start off with a beautiful, beautiful cube here. And the size for this cube I'll set this to 300 by 40 by 800. The size itself doesn't really matter, but for the purpose of this tutorial, I'll set it to these sizes here. Then, the next thing I'll do over here is I need this road to basically collapse. In this state here, it's one single item, so that doesn't help us at all. So what I'll do is I'll head over to MoGraph. And inside of MoGraph, I'm looking for Voronoi Fracture, my best friend. I've just pressed Alt and I've clicked on Voronoi Fracture and that automatically parents the cube to this Voronoi Fracture. Now the next thing I'll do over here is I want to head over to Sources because I would like to increase the amount of particles, if you want to call them that, or fractures within my road. And in this case here, I'll just head up to Sources, Point Generator, and I'll set this to 800. Now, once I've set that to 800 points, the next thing I'll do over here is I want to throw in some dynamics into the equation. So, I'll head over to Voronoi Fracture, have that selected, then I'll right-click, and I'm looking for Simulation Tags, and in this case here, Rigid Bodies. Now, the thing is, once it's set to Rigid Bodies, if you hit Play, the entire road starts to collapse all in one go. And that is not what we want. So, in order to fix that, I'm gonna head over to Dynamics. And inside of Dynamics, I wanna set this trigger. Instead of immediately, I don't want all the objects to just collapse. I'll set this to On Collision. And once it's set to On Collision, in this case here, it just means if something hits it with a certain force, then it's going to begin dynamics and before that it won't do anything and in this case here i'll set mine to around about 15 because that's a nice tried tested number that i've used then the next thing from that is i'll head over to collision and i want to bump up the freak the friction just just a little bit and now when i hit play nothing happens because in this case here, an object must hit it with at least 15 centimeters of force. Now, in this case here, the next thing I'll do is, since this is a Voronoi fracture, I can add in some effectors. And the effect I'd like to create here is going to be a plane effector. This is what's going to be doing the destruction. I could create a sphere and have that sphere a physical object that has dynamics on it, and run that through the scene. But in this case here, I just want to create that effector. So I'll go to MoGraph, and inside MoGraph, I'm looking for effectors, and this will just be a normal plane effector. Now in my case here, I've deselected the Voronoi Fracture first, then I've clicked on the plane option. And by deselecting it, it doesn't automatically add it to my object, so I have to manually add it. I'll go to Voronoi Fracture, and I'll click and drag this plane into my effectors. Now what this will do is it actually moves everything up by 100, which is the default value. Now in this case here, I don't want it moving all my items up, I just want it moving them in a certain range. So how I have, what I have to do to fix that is go to plane, fall off, and I'll change my fall off from infinite to something like a sphere. And now in this case here, as I run the sphere through, it only affects the items inside of its range. Now, what I'll do here is I'll probably drop down the sphere size to 50 by 50 by 50. So it isn't too, too large. And I run through my item. Yeah, that looks pretty decent. And then also the height is way, way too much. It's going to be super obvious that these items are being forced up. So I'll probably set the Y direction inside of parameters to around about five centimeters. So it's ever so slight what it's lifting up. 
And then also I'd like to scale the items up as well so they do get a little bit bigger. And I'll switch this over to uniform scale. So it scales everything at once, X, Y, and Z. Now in this case here, scale, I'll set this to something really small, like 0.1. So they get scaled up ever so slightly as this Voronoi fracture is being affected. Then I'll drag my little fall off or the plane effector slightly back. I'll set a keyframe at zero. I'll drag my timeline all the way across to 90 and I'll pull my item all the way forward to where it should end and I'll set another keyframe there. Now if I jump back to the beginning and I hit play, you'll see that these items begin to collapse, which is super, super cool. But now in this case here, I also want to add in a connector because all of these objects are kind of separate and I can see that nothing's really connected together. Whereas with something like concrete, you should then see some of these fractured elements kind of being connected to one another as they fall down. So I'll head over to my Voronoi fracture and inside my Voronoi fracture, I'm looking to create some connectors. So there's a little connectors tab somewhere there for you to use and I'll create a fixed connector. Now in this case here, it then creates this little item here, this connector, and I can see the force here is 40,000 centimeters and the torque here is set to 40,000 as well. So let's see what this does with default values. So as I hit play, it's a little bit slower, but now I can see that we're getting some of these items still connected to each other. They're not falling off as easily as they used to as it runs through. And I kind of want a little bit more destruction. So I'll probably set this down to value of, let's go 20,000. Let's have a look at what this does. I'll play it through. And yes, that's a little bit more of a desirable result. Then you'll see here, kind of gets destroyed through the middle and I'm pretty much happy with that. Might even go slightly higher to a 30,000 value. Let's jump back and hit play. Oh, beautiful. Now in this case here, it's all about tweaking, 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 tweaking to make sure you're using the values that you want. I recommend that you go through and play with some of these sizes. I might just change a fall off here ever so slightly so it's a little bit wider. Let's have a play through. Oh, beautiful. Look at that. Because it's connectors, it kind of connects those objects there. So not everything collapses, but it kind of has a springiness to it, which I really, really like. Beautiful. Now that I have that, it's all basically down to texturing. Because in this case here, you can have your Veronoi fracture have different textures on the outside compared to the textures on the inside. I'm just going to create a basic, basic black texture for the inside. And I'll create another texture here, which will maybe be the concrete or whatever that's inside of this. Doesn't really matter. Then Voronoi fracture, we also have these selections options. So I can make um, the outside faces different colors and the inside face is different colors. Once I enable these, it creates these little selection tags called inside face and outside face. I can then throw my materials on the object. So my black material and my gray material. Once I have that, I can then select my black material and I'm looking for this texture tag over here, which is for outside faces. So they must be colored black. And then my inside faces here I like them colored in gray. So now when I click on that material, it says outside face is black. When I select this material here, inside faces is gray. The order here does matter. So I first want this applied. Then on top of that, I want the inside faces. Now in this case here, I can then just take off the color, the, that random color from my Voronoi fracture. So colorize fragments, deselect this option here. And now when I hit play, it goes through, it fractures my objects, and they end up gray on the inside. You could throw whatever textures you wanted to 
on this road. Absolutely beautiful. And then if you're happy with those results, all you have to do is then just go in and bake down these collisions. Bake all, cooking, 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 as it goes through to bake. Once it's done, the playback should be a lot quicker. 80%, 90%, and 100. Perfect. Now when I play through, slightly quicker, and that looks absolutely beautiful if you ask me. Fantastic, fantastic, fantastic. And that's basically how you can do some road, I guess, destruction or road collapse, whatever you want to call it. And that is it. Please subscribe to Specs Arena and hopefully you guys will request some more tutorials and we'll see what we can do. Thank you very much for watching. Make sure you hit that like and share. And this is Albert Sito saying goodbye.